What would you say if I told you that I could teach you a skilled trade right here on this YouTube channel? The videos that I'm going to produce are going to teach the average person right out of school, you don't have to have a, a college degree or anything, how to learn this skilled trade of machining. And when I'm teach you, telling you I'm going to teach you this trade, I'm telling you, you'll be able to have your own, you'll be able to pri provide for a family, you'll be able to have your own home, you'll be able to have vehicles or boats, wherever you're, whatever your thing is. And the nice part about this skilled trade is you don't have to climb on ceilings. You may not, um, maybe maybe you're at a dead end job and you're thinking, what do I can? I'm, I don't I don't want to go through school or I don't want to take all the reading, writing, arithmetic, the psychology classes. These videos are designed to teach you what you need to know specifically for this trade. My name is Matt and I've been doing this for more almost 30 years and I started on the bottom. I started sawing and I was maybe like you. I looked at that when I was sawing and I look at these guys running these machines and I think I could never do this. Well, I did. I learned. And and it's not at all as difficult as one would think. It's a good trade to get into for multiple reasons. And that's what these videos are designed to do. Um, a CNC machinist. A CNC machinist has a ton of benefits and um, and this is just an introductory video to get you going if it's something you might be interested in subscribe hit your little bell thing and, and when these next videos come out which will be very shortly they're only going to be five or ten minute videos it's going to be a very easy user-friendly uh, package of videos here my job used to be for five years to train elementary kids right out of high school and and my boss Years ago, I would say, Matt, I, mean, this is, I want this guy on the floor. And he'd bring him right in out of high school. And my job was to train these kids. And within six, to six nine months, maybe a year, he'd pull them off and he'd put them on one of his machines. And they were machinists. A few years later, in fact, I still get together with a lot of them. They have families. They have beautiful homes. Okay, you're not making a million dollars, whatever. But you have a decent job. You know, it's a demanding job. And that is one first benefit of this trade. It's extremely demanding. And when, they, when the military wants, uh, wants to build more destroyers, they need you. When, they, when, the, when the machine companies or paper companies have something broken down, oftentimes when it's made out of aluminums or steels or metals, they need you to do it. And would you understand what you're doing, you have a lot of pull. You have a lot of clout. It's extremely demanding. Another benefit of being a machinist is it's a skilled trade. It's nice to walk around and say, hey, you know, I'm a skilled tradesman. That's something to write home about. Uh, all, the, all them years, people would ask me, Matt, what do you do? People haven't met me. And it it's kind of feels good to say, I'm in one of the trades. I'm a skilled tradesman. I run a machine, a CNC machine, and I make intricate parts and pieces that make machine other machines work and sort of kind of make the world go around in that aspect the wages now when i say the wages are high i mean you're not making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year but i'm from the north i'm from wisconsin up here and in wisconsin the wages are a lot different than they are in different parts of the country however when i started in the early 90s the wages a good wage was 11 12 bucks an hour up here now these guys are making $30, $35 an hour with these high-skilled trades. I mean, and, and that's, you, you don't have no luggage tied with it. You can go to work. And why are they paying these guys that? It's so demanding. They need the help. If you know what you're doing, it is easy to get into. And that is what I want to teach you to do. I want to teach you only what you need to know. 30 years is a lot to say. I don't know everything, but what I'm going to share with you is the only things you need. I'm not going to teach you your psychology classes. No, that's not bad. I'm sure there's reasons they do that. But this course is designed to strictly stay right on this. Watch these videos. Take a few minutes and look at and if you and when you get it, you know, don't go to the next video until you take your notebook and pencil and scribble it and learn it. As if your teacher from fifth grade was giving you a homework assignment and you needed to study the, 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 the chapter you were on. Once you have the chapter down, move to the next video. Um, I don't know how I got off on that, but uh, good working conditions. Now, when I say good working conditions, there's a lot of people out there who don't want to have a suit and a tie. They don't want to do that. I'm sitting in the office at, at my machine shop right now. I own my own machine shop. I've worked my way, thank God. Um, it's, it's just, I've worked my way from sawing in the early 90s, not knowing what a chamfering tool was, all the way to having my own business. And the fact of it is, 
it's just learning steps. That's all it is. If you think I can't do this, you're, you're, you're for the most part, you're not right. It's not as difficult as you think. Watch these videos and, and you'll be able to walk into any machine shop and have 90% of anything you're going to need to, to, to take with you to start this trade. And what you don't have, I'll inform you that you will know what it is so you won't be caught by surprise. But what I mean by good working conditions is oftentimes I would like to get out of that office if I got a couple guys call in sick. I want to run those machines. It makes me feel good. I get a little bit of exercise. And for the most part, you don't have to bend down so much. Now you got jip cranes and all this. You don't have to be climbing on ceilings. You don't have to be sitting out in the blowing cold wind or in a 95 degree heat. Oftentimes, you know, some, some shops aren't temperature controlled in the summer. A lot of them are. Um, but but you're not in the d direct sun and in the winter one of the things I loved about this trade is in the winter you could go into into the shop and all oh, was blowing outside you get in there it's 65 degrees you got a sweater you pop your soda pop turn your radio on maybe just keep it down a little bit and you start building parts and that's what these videos are going to show you how to do and w when you're done with them you're going to say you know that was a huge part of me learning it's not like I came to this trade yesterday, and it's not like I never trained people before. The conditions of working are good. You know, if, you, if it's a, if a three-piece suit you're looking for, it ain't for you. But also, if I tell you it's not that working down in the maybe the mill in the third shift when, it, when it's, you know, I mean, that's not for you either. It's kind of a happy medium. You don't have to impress everybody. I get these sales guys coming in, and, they're, and I feel bad for them sometimes because they got to sell. You don't need to sell. If you know what you're doing in this trade and you do it well, you don't need to sell. You don't need to worry about it. You're just making pieces all day, being left alone for the most part. And all these things I'll share with you. Machining allows you to be creative. Creativity maybe isn't your thing, but when you have a job that says do this, do that, do this, do that, the same thing every day, you don't have a sense of creativity. Remember when you were kids and you could play tractors and you were creative and things was were fun? I mean... That's what I'm talking about. Be creative. It allows you to be creative. A sense of accomplishment. A sense of accomplishment is huge. When I worked on the farm when I was a kid, you would start the summer out bailing hay and that hay mow was empty. Boy, but when that hay mow was full in the fall of the year, you looked at that and said, wow, we did that. That was a, It felt good. It was a sense of accomplishment. It's not just they're paying you to do it, but trust me, it feels good. And lastly, what I can think of for one of the benefits is it's fun. These kids nowadays are playing these video games and, and nobody's paying them to do that. But I'll tell you something. When you learn these softwares that they have right now, designing and they have these intricate parts and you can, you can make tool generation and tool path, which we'll get into, go a certain way. You know, it's a little bit more advanced. It'll be a while down the road. It's fun. And that's... And if you look at it, it's not what you're dealing with, it's how you're looking at it. It's really fun, and they're paying you to do it. And the better you get at it, you know, the more you're going to get paid. And I believe it's it's the year 2019 right now. I have seen the demand in this trade exponentially rise. I believe in my heart, if the economy would continue to go like this, I believe my children, when they're even just 10 years from now, they're going to be making easily over $100,000 a year for an experienced machinist. Now, you may laugh at that. Uh, but but I do believe it's going to 100,000 six figures are not going to be a big issue because like I said when the military wants to build destroyers they need you when they want to build jeeps when they want to build tanks when they want to build aircraft carriers whatever they need a skilled tradesman they need it to get it done they need the electrical and um, electric electricians and the plumbers as well but what I'm going to teach you in these videos specifically is this trade there's a few fundamental things that I want to share. I only got a minute or two left here in this video, and then we're going to get right into the learning uh, and the next few videos of the basics and the elementary. But before I, uh, before I do that, I want to share with you that there's fundamentals in this that maybe I wish people would have told me. It would have made it a little easier. Not that it would have changed anything, but the basic knowledge in your math. Now stop. We're going to start right from the beginning. I am not telling you you need to learn your calculus and you need to know your advanced algebra. There are certain geometries you don't need to know. And I'm going to be honest with you. With the advanced technology that they have today, which I am going to share with you, I'm, I, don't, I would recommend learning your math no matter what. But I am going to teach you and show you the only thing you need to know. Because, the, like I said, this trade is so advanced and there are new machines, CNC machines coming out. Nine out of ten, 90% of this stuff is done for you. 
So the basic knowledge is 90% is your math skills. And I will go through these math skills, and I will bet you that I will never get past the sixth grade level. Now, you're going to laugh at that. Now, some other machinists are out there, oh, you ain't going to teach them nothing. You will never get past the sixth grade level, and you'll be a very good machinist. Remember I told you that because it's not as difficult as you think. Basic mathematics is going to take 90% of this trade and make it easy. And you think all them buttons on them C and Cs, oh, I got to learn all that. That's nothing. I could show you how to run some of that new technology right now in two days, and you could be programming your own parts. But I cannot teach you simple decimals to fractions, fractions to decimals. I can't teach you the simple coordinate system and have you retain that. The good part is all that stuff you learned back in fifth and sixth grade. And those are the things I'm going to push because those are the things you're going to need. You ain't going to need that finite mathematics and that advanced algebra. You don't need it. With the technology they got today, and, and I'm, I own a shop. I don't care if you have a degree and I don't care. Other guys do it. It's a good thing. I'm not, hash, I'm not, I'm not bashing it. It's a good thing, but I want a guy who knows how to run his machine and knows how to run it independently and can make parts. And I know all the guys who own machine shops, that's all they care about because they're in it for the business, just like you may be someday. So your basic, your basic skills, stupid as it sounds, read a ruler. I'm going to go through these videos. You can say, oh my gosh, I already know how to read a, read a ruler. Great, great. Just, just watch it. If it's what you know, move on. But there's a few things I'm going to show you. It's crazy. Some of the guys that we got coming around leaving high school and they don't know how to read a ruler. It's not that difficult. You can learn it in a very short period of time. Um, understand, this is not a desk job. It's not a job you're going to sit down and, and um, unless, of course, you end up getting to the point where you have your own shop. It's not, if you think you're just going to sit there like this, you're not. But trust me, you do that so long, it's not its not fun. It, it, you you got to go to the gym. And sitting there, when I used the machine, oh, you get up and you can move around. It wasn't overly strenuous work at all, but it was really to, what I would call is healthy work. And everything is bench level. You know, your machines are designed so you can go like this. Uh, your benches are designed just like you would eat at your kitchen island. Uh, it, it's really, and now, like I said, they got jip cranes for heavy things and, and swing booms. And for the most part, you know, you're getting a really nice, uh, uh, moderate exercise. And you're not breathing heavy. You're not doing this and that. This trade is great. These are some of the positive things. But do understand, it's not a desk job. Um, but be able to think for yourself. Lastly, be able to think for yourself. When I interview people, um, the first thing I want to know is, are they a person who can just live in the rational world around us? You know what I'm saying? I mean, um, you got to have your common sense. I mean, if you're going to take a vice and, you know, I had a guy one time, he put a vice around one inch shaft in a vice and he clamped it in a vice and he stuck it. And this guy's been machining for years and he stuck it. It's about a one inch shaft. He stuck it in a vice and the vice is only this thick, but he probably stuck it you know it's probably a, a shaft a foot long and he was going to mill the top of that and i says what are you doing he says well, i'm going to mill the top of that and you i could take my hand and just move that shaft over because i had the mechanical advantage way high like that i'm thinking you know you could run this machine backwards and forwards but if you don't have any common sense you you can't put that in a vice like that and don't be alarmed or anything like that that just that's just like when i'm talking common sense i'm using examples like that i mean really common sense so that was the fundamentals. That's the introduction to this. If you're interested, subscribe. Most of the YouTubes um, that I put out are not going to be this long. They're only going to be three, five, four minutes. I say that now. But um, and then what, what, what you need to do is just go through them, research them, learn them. And then when you know you have it, go to the next thing. And when it get towards the end, when I, I'll let you know. I'll say, if you know these videos you will be able to enter this shop. I'll even go to the point where I will tell you my opinion as to what to say when you approach these machine shops and how to how, how to talk to them. You know, I'm not promising it's going to work. Everyone's different. I'm, I will share, though, tips that you can talk and things that you can say to get in these shops. And if you, if you watch these videos and learn them, I can tell you right now, you're going to be, if it's something you're looking at, it's going to be worth your while. So subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want, whatever. Um, next, what you'll hear is, uh, I, I'm not going to tell you what the title of the next video is because I want to do a little more research, but um, just click to see the next video and we'll go from there.